unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Acts 8, 14, 23. It says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's a difference, right? There's a difference between putting someone in water and someone being receiving the Holy Ghost, right? As they, the experience of the baptism. And when uh, the Bible says Simon saw, uh, the Bible says they... they then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them, he offered them, he offered them money. The Bible says, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money, that thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore for thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought, thy, the thought of thine heart may be forgive, forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Somebody say, This is the word of the Lord. So, I want you to listen very keenly here. The Bible tells us, these guys came to Samaria. They knew they were born again. They asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, no. They lay hands on them and power comes. When power comes on them, Simon the sorcerer, former sorcerer, sees the power and he says, eh, <laughs> I want that thing. Are you hearing me? And then he says, I'm offering money for this gift and then many of you know the story of Simon the sorcerer the Bible tells us that he was the great power of God the people regarded him the great power of God because he did much sorcery and witchcraft on the people he used to bewitch people you understand he used to bewitch cities and he used to bewitch people and so the scriptures tell us that they gave heed to him uh, from the least to the greatest, saying that this man is the great power of God. Do you see it was a capital G? He was the great power of God. And the Bible says, and next verse, and to him they had regard because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And the next verse, but when Philip, when they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized and both men and women. And the Bible says, and Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So are you seeing the picture of where I'm coming from? Simon the sorcerer begins from a place where he's doing miracles, he's doing signs, he's doing wonders, he's amazing people by his power. And then he finds a man with deeper power. Somebody say amen. amen. When he finds a man with deeper power, he says, give me that power also. The scriptures tell us. Alright? Because he saw the power. He believed. And the Bible says he followed them around. That means the guy who was following them around was born again. Simon the sorcerer became born again. He was no longer the sorcerer. Now he was born again. The Bible says he went about beholding the wonders and wondering. He was a believer. Somebody say he was a believer. Say he was a believer. Many years ago, I was at campus. I should have been in my second year. And I was in my bed. 
And I've had several experiences where I've had visitations by God when I'm either asleep or when I'm almost sleeping. You understand what I'm saying? And then kind of it gets your spirit and then interrupts it. Right? Because the spirit of a saint is not supposed to sleep. If you sleep and your spirit sleeps, you have a problem. That's why the psalmist says, for when I sleep, my spirit wakeneth. Right? His spirit, your spirit is supposed to be awake, even though your body is asleep. It's the only way it can have a certain attention toward God on a constant basis. Some of you, when you sleep, you sleep soul, body, and spirit. <laughs> Literally, you die. <laughs> when I was growing up, I had a friend. We used to live together in the same area. And one time he came at home and then he slept on the bed. And then he slept so hard that he, he, he twisted himself and fell off the bed. I just heard the sound. Bwah, he just, uh, then he just continued. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that is not me. They are not talking about me. Some of you, you sleep. By the way, if you're snoring, I rebuke snoring right now. <laughs> Receive it, by the way. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Somebody has taken it. An unbeliever will continue, but somebody has received it. So, one of those experiences I remember, God told me something that I will never forget. He came in a vision and I was asleep. And I had never quite read the story fully of Simon the Sorcerer. Fully. The first time I actually understood that, that story, I was in the sleep, as sleeping, and he carried my spirit. And he told me, I want to tell you something about Simon the sorcerer. My head told me, I have heard about that guy, but I didn't know exactly the story. Right? And I remember him telling me, many Christians are like that man. There's a spirit at work in men which is like that man. And the Lord continued to explain to me what it was, how it worked, why it is so, how it works in the lives of men, etc, etc. So at the end of the vision, I wake up and I'm so, so scared. In my head, I'm like, oh my God, I have to check myself. Do you understand? And then I open the Bible and for the first time I realized that the story as God had narrated to me, in the vision was the same story as it was in the scriptures and I'd never read it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the Lord wanted to tell me something about a very profound experience in the things of God. And I want to share it. Many people want to be fished for they don't want to learn to fish. Do you understand? Many people would rather you pray for him rather than teaching him how to pray. Many people would rather that you, you become somebody they call every time and send a WhatsApp message or a Facebook issue or an email every time. Oh, Apostle, I have this problem. Pray for me. Then you pray. Oh, Apostle, I have this problem. Then you pray. It is okay for some time, but there comes a time when a man and a woman must mature enough to be equipped to fix their own issues. Because if you don't fix your issues, it means you will not fix the issues of other people. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense? So it's expedient that we learn to equip saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. God has called you and I to produce results. It's the only way we can multiply. Am I saying something here? It's the only way we can what? We can multiply. If we don't produce results, each one of us, we cannot multiply. God is killing this whole mindset of I have to go to the man of God. The church is changing in a certain transition as the world is 
And we are going to come to a point where men just come in the presence of God to be sharpened. Not to be, just to be sharpened. Because he prophesied in the scriptures that one day all will be healed. I see a time in life and I know many of you are starting to feel it. But we are going to get to a point where everybody in the meeting is healed. Everybody in the meeting is blessed. Their finances are okay. Their marriage is fine. Everything is okay. Now at that particular point, what do we do? Are you hearing me? There has to be something deeper than a job, deeper than marriage, deeper than a car, deeper than healing, deeper than that. That is the only way we can equip saints for the work of ministry. Whether I'm a marposo, I have a responsibility to that. Whether I'm a prophet, I have a responsibility to that. Whether I'm a teacher, I have a responsibility to that. Whether I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an evangelist, whether I'm a pastor, business person, wherever you are, you have due responsibility. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Say, Amen. So, the essence of why we come every Thursday is to fill you with something. To fill you with something. Then you get to a point where you yourself go back and fix something. You fix it. You fix it. Are you hearing me? They say, hey, your kid is dying. You tell him, leave this to me. Are you hearing me? You get into that kid, speak into their body and they are restored. Why? Because there is a point where your kid can have an issue bigger than Kalpo. Parents, no Kalpo. You understand what I'm saying? Bigger than painkillers and Panago. And God requires that you be equipped. Hallelujah. So, God told me, we have raised a generation of people who are not, they are not attached to producing results. They are attached to receiving results. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is okay for a while, but it's not okay up to a certain stage in your life. Somebody say, Amen. So, he began to show me that he has availed us with an anointing. Each one of us. The Bible says that he has, we have been accepted. We are among the accepted. He has regarded and desired us to be, and we are in the acceptable to partake in the inheritance of the saints of the light. Are we together? He has made us meet. That's what the Bible tells us. He has made us meet. He has made us meet. We carry the full assurance, the power and the ability to partake in the inheritance that has been placed before us by God. But it doesn't mean that everybody moves in it. I don't know if I'm making sense. It doesn't mean that everybody has it functioning fully. And because of that, when many see power, they want to buy. And buying is in many forms. It's not necessarily money. Buying is in many forms. Instead of, of, of understanding how certain things come, they want to buy it. The anointing cannot be bought. Can I say it again? The anointing of the Holy Spirit cannot be bought. Are you hearing me? You cannot buy power. I saw a deception a few years ago among some saints who went about saying a couple of things that never made sense to me for so long. And I thank God that I understood these things early. And it says, I, I touched somebody and then I took the anointing. You don't tap like that. You, the anointing is not a hanky that you steal it. The woman who removes virtue from Jesus did not steal it. You cannot steal what is available. Am I making sense? You cannot steal what is available. And some go into instances where they are manipulated into offering certain things. Eh? Sacrifice your Isaac. Eh? Some of you have sacrificed Isaacs. Right? But according to the scripture, the, the Isaac sacrificed went back to the owner. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If it's Isaac, it goes back. And the Lord provides himself a lamb. <laughs> I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. And I mean when somebody says, oh, this is my Isaac. I pray for you, I give it back to you. <laughs> because they don't kill Isaac. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm making sense. Am I making sense? 
And people have paid and done many things, not only monetarily, but many things in the spirit of trying to buy. And God told the man, you have no parts, no lot in this. I told him, for in thee, he says, your heart is not right in the sight of God. And the next verse says, for repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart might be forgiven thee. How could he think that he could buy the anointing? And do you know how many people buy without even knowing? And I'm going to explain that. I'm going to explain that somebody say amen. Let me show you a certain scripture. A very famous scripture. Let's open Luke chapter 10 verse 42. You remember the time when Mary sits at the feet of Jesus Christ? You remember that time? And then Martha was busy uh, doing her businesses. And then she gets disturbed with Jesus. And then she tells Jesus, And to uh, disturb this woman is seated while I'm serving thee. Because it was a feast. And she was supposed to be serving a rabbi. And then she tells her, Martha, Jesus tells Martha, you're troubled with many things. For Mary has chosen the rightful thing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 39. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the feet of Jesus and had his word. Next verse. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And the next verse says, And Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Uh But one thing is, tell your neighbor, one thing is needful. Yeah, the Bible says, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Somebody say, "Amen." Amen. Now, the word part... Is the very word it says in the scriptures, you have no part, no lot. And I'm going to come to the lot later, but I'm going to explain the part. The word there, part, is meris. And meris is translated as portion. Right? In other words, you have no portion. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no portion. You remember when Jesus was washing uh, the disciples' feet in John? You remember the scriptures? 13.8. Where Peter tells him, ah, you're not going to wash my feet. And he tells him, if I do this not, you have no part in me. Give me the amplified of that. He says, and Peter said unto him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him and said, unless I wash you, you have no part within me. You have no share in companionship with me. The word there, part again, is meris. And I'm going to explain the portion. I'm going to explain that. Portion. When you become born again, God allots a portion according to what the Bible calls the rule of the measure. Do you understand? We are graced. I want you to understand that the apostleship for the obedience of nations comes with a certain grace on it. Right? But there's also a distinction in God. For the sufficiency of a man having all that he needs and having more for everyone. Not just financially, but in many aspects of life. I mean to say, God has given all of us the measure of faith. Enough faith to survive. Healing is inside you. It's not outside. Your finances can only be fixed by what is inside you. Everything in this world is what's inside you. He says we have this treasure in nothing vessels that the excellence of power may be of God. You have something inside you and that thing is the answer of everything in your life. Am I clear to that level? God has given us a measure, the measure of faith for us to believe for anything in this world and carry the sufficiency and enough for anybody else. Right? But when we get into the blessing of responsibility, In the kingdom of God. We are given an extra grace. All of us, the Bible says, have been given the apostleship for the obedience unto nations. And as all of us have the ability to cause nations to obey. But there's a grace that cannot come unless you position yourself to make it happen. I don't know if I'm making sense. 
And that comes with a certain measure. And Paul calls that measure, the rule of the measure, by which we reach you. And he says that when we are working, we don't, we don't measure ourselves beyond the measure that is distributed to each one of us to function. Are we together? However, in that measure, he says, we will not boast of things without measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even you. Next verse. Uh, for we stretch not ourselves, listen, beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule. You are rule abundantly. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I read it for you in the Amplified. Let's amplify it. Begin from, from where I began from. Yeah. We, on the other hand, he says, will not boast beyond our legitimate province. Right? And the word there again, province, you realize it's more like part, the portion. The word there for province is the same word as portion. And proper limit. But we will keep within the limits of our commission, which God has alluded as unto our measuring line, which reaches and includes even you. Right? For we are not overstepping the limits of our province and stretching beyond our ability to reach, as though we reached not, had no legitimate mission to you. For we were the very first to come even as far as you with the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I said, for we not, not boast, therefore, beyond our proper limit over other men's labors, but we have the hope and confident expectation that as your faith continues to grow, our field among you may be greatly enlarged, still within the limits of our commission, the mandate. Upon your life. Are we together? When a man has not understood what is alluded to them, what is given to them by portion, they will boast of other men's labors. I don't know if they're making sense. They will think they're responsible of what they're not responsible of. God can honor a man's prayer and another man takes the glory of it. Do you understand? But it's a dangerous thing when you move with a fire you can't light. <laughs> because one day when the rule changes, you're in trouble. I don't know if I'm making sense. But anyway, that's, that's for the school of ministry. Let's continue here. <laughs> L- let me leave that because of time. I want to really rush through. God gives you and I a portion. And there's a place of yielding and responding and receiving it. You understand? Every man must know their part in the gospel. That's why in the book of Revelation, it's even very sensitive. He says that if, if a man removes all ads on this book, he says his part shall be rubbed out. Because whether you want it or not, whether you're attending charities every Sunday or a Thursday or you go wherever you go, you have a part in the gospel. You have a part in the gospel. Somebody say, I have a part in the gospel. Whether you're not, you might not be on the pulpit, but you have a part. You might not be a worshipper, but you have a part. You, you might not, you know, uh, be in a team or anything, but you have a part. And every man ought to have a part and understand their part in the gospel. Are we together? Are we together? Some of you think that because we are under grace, eh, it means that we can abuse it. I don't know if I'm making sense. You remember in Acts chapter 1 when the, the Bible speaks of um, a, a gentleman called um, uh, this guy who sold Jesus. What was his name? Judas, verse 17. Acts 1, 17. He says, 1, 17. Begin probably from 16. He says, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. And the next verse says, for he was what? He was what? He was numbered and had obtained part of his what? Of this ministry. He had. God did not intend for Judas to die. Judas had obtained a part in the ministry. Jesus came to bring grace and truth. 
He was a minister of grace. There is no point in all of this where Judas could not have received grace, even for what he did. He was not the only guy who screwed up. Peter did. He denied our Lord three times. Are we together? Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you go to the 24th verse? The 24th verse says, And they prayed and said, Thou, O Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether, whether of these two whom thou hast chosen. Next verse. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And ladies and gentlemen, what happened? They got forth their lots, and the Lord fell upon Matthias, and was numbered with the eleven apostles. Matthias was not originally called to do what Judas was called to do. Matthias took the path and lot. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? When you go to the Lord, you're talking about an inheritance. Part is portion, lot is inheritance. Portion, the part of portion distinctively draws your lines of influence in the demonstration of the power of God, right? And the ministration of the same. The inheritance goes into the divine mandate upon your life and your course that you must follow. Am I making sense? So, the part is your portion. The lot is your course and your inheritance. Inheritance can only be understood when a man has understood his course. When you don't understand your course, you cannot walk in the inheritance of God upon your life. That is why a man who has not understood the assignment of God upon his life, that man cannot walk in course, even if he has a portion. And there are people who demonstrate power, but you ask him, why are you demonstrating power? Okay, why do you teach? Okay, why do you pray for the sick? Okay, why are you doing... You, you, you realize he has no vision. And when I'm talking about vision, I'm not talking about... In 20 years, I want to have the biggest church in Africa. That's not a vision. It's deeper than that. Because when we define church, we're not talking about a building. When we define church, we're talking about people. So when you say you want to have the biggest church in Africa, are you looking at having a big institution, be called church, or are you looking at the quality and effect of the lives of men? Do you have a part and lot in this? Because to God, it's not about the millions that come to you. It's about the quality of every man in that meeting. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, am I saying, oh, I'm this because, yes, I have the numbers. Or am I saying it because I have a part and responsibility in that? Because every man equals to life. You remember when Jesus Christ was doing the Holy Communion? He says, take, for this is my blood in the New Testament. The New Testament began with his blood. And that is the life. That is the expectation and experience of every child of God who has believed on this message. When you believe the New Testament, your life was to eat also. We cannot always continue to come to the presence of God every day receiving from God. Without the ability to be perfected for the work of ministry, the edification of the body. Otherwise we are not preaching. Every man in this part has to go back and weigh himself and say, Hey God, yes, you've blessed me. You've given me children. You've given me a house. You've given me this and given me that. I might not be at the most perfect part of expectation, but you've done a lot in my life. You understand? But how can I always be coming in your presence and I'm asking? Do you understand what I'm saying? There has to be a place where you have a certain part and lot. Now, this guy doesn't have a mandate on his life. He doesn't understand the assignment. He hasn't known a course. Neither a portion. And then he sees demonstration of power. And then he says, I want it. Then he realizes, oh, I think I can buy this. And he wants something without the responsibility of it. Do you know what it means to give you something without the maturity and responsibility to handle it? That's what the Bible says, appoint not a novice. Least out of pride, he destroys himself. Do you know how people have been destroyed because they were given certain positions? The guy was called an apostle and he changed. Before that he was okay. But when they told him you are an apostle, he started walking in a certain way. He started talking to people a certain way. Why? Because he's a what? 
started getting people with guns around him all over to protect the anointing. Why? Because he's an apostle. I don't know if I'm making sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you realize that the reason why suddenly probably Paul is beaten in Lystra and Derby is preaching the gospel. And he had the power to hire guys, but he didn't. Not because he didn't have the authority and the ability to. I told people Jesus could have had whatever he wanted. Imagine, he says, Father, I thank you because you always hear me when I pray. Do you know what it means? God hears every prayer. If I gave you only two minutes and, you say, and God said everything you're going to ask in the next two minutes, you're going to get it. Simani. <laughs> Uganda would become Europe in three seconds. My goodness. Your boss would be dead by tomorrow. Become a kate, 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 Everyone who spoke even about you said, God, everyone who spoke about you, tie their tongue now, tie it. God is even helping us not to answer some prayers. <laughs> Somebody say amen. So, I started to realize that certain people, instead of partaking a portion and lot in this, they are buying. And I started to see people who go for worship and they join choirs and they are worshiping. And you say, Ibanange, this sister is very faithful. Every Saturday she's worshiping. But if you enter her heart, she's buying. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the guy says, but I've been worshipping for 20 years. Why is it that I don't get the anointing? But then a certain man of God said, when he became a worshipper, he got the anointing. The state of your heart. Then I started to see people ushering, but they were buying. Then I started to see people preaching on the streets. They were buying. They told them, the moment you preach on the streets, and the anointing will find you there. You understand? He's not on the streets because it's a divine assignment. He's on the streets because he wants an anointing. He's not on prayer mountain because it's a divine instruction. He's on prayer mountain because a certain man told him, when I went on prayer mountain, God met me. He's not in the rain because it's an assignment or it's a mandate or it's coincidence or it's an appointed thing by God. He's, on a, he's in the rain because somebody told him I stood one time in the rain and the rain hit me and God anointed me. So even if you, if you want the anointing, Stand in the rain. Your heart is not clear with God. You don't want the anointing because you're going to take the responsibility of it. You want to function in the anointing because you also want to be like Superman. Pew! He has fallen. Fire. Pew! He has fallen. Ay, 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 Pew! He has fallen. I want to show you that I have power. I want to show you that I have power. Who else? You, even you, you want? Pew! You understand? He said, wow, I can, I have power. But he's buying. He's buying. The gift of God cannot be bought. Tell your neighbor, the gift of God cannot be bought. Tell him again, the gift of God cannot be bought. Tell him one more time, tell him, the gift of God cannot be bought. You must have your part and your lot. Tell him again, you must have your part and your lot. Let me tell you, if a man came on a pulpit or did anything to say, God, I am serving because I love you. I'm going to pray because I love you. Not because they called me, not because I have to go, not because they sent me a message, but because I love you. I'm serving because I love you. Somebody was worshipping and then he said, If you worship God, everything you want will come. That, that's the thing. That's the thing. So why am I worshipping? Why am I worshipping? Such that certain things what? Come. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You, you, you are not praying. That's why you don't have a man. When you start going for prayer, the man will come. Then the sister starts to come for Fanero every Thursday. What is she looking for? What is she looking for? Hey. <laughs> That's why they are not faithful to the word. 
the church has become like a, like a, like, like a shrine. Eh? We, we go to which doctors. Now, some of you, you know the African culture. People used to go to which doctors. Now, the approach men of God as witchcraft. Musumba, what one doga? Chichi cholaba. Olaba chi musumba. Ani. Kazini. Amusumba muloge. Mukbe. Bempe. Ba. Now, again, you understand. Mamka katia yote chakanyo. Wali wechi lala chiri mu uma. Gendo. Ay, 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 ay. Wali echi into. Then somebody comes to Uma. Why? Not because they want to know God. But they want to what? Buy. I saw men giving. They were not giving because they loved God. No. They were giving because they wanted to buy. Listen. You give because you, you love Him. You get, it's like, I don't understand. It's like I was telling somebody the other day. I don't understand somebody who has children and they don't tithe. God has given you children. And you don't tithe. The rest, don't worry. The parent. You saw your child walking with both hands and eyes and ears. They could hear. And they have a brain. They understand. And you can't invest for them. Listen, the Levite got a blessing out of the bosom of who? Abraham. Your tithes go to your children too. Something about them happens. Something about them happens. Because if, if God honored what came out of the loins of Abraham, right? And then he honored it even unto the seed. How much more? Do you understand where I'm coming from? But anyway, I'm going deeper. So I said, you see, that a man can do things for God and you say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But why is it that this guy has served God for 20 years, but he has failed to see results? Simple. Some of them were buying. And until the state of your heart is put right, you'll never see glory. There are people, if God gives you now power, I don't know. I don't know. Now we can greet you because you are a little bit poorer. But the day you get... <laughs> Some men have one wife because of the job they have. But they... Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> the day he gets more money to keep him home is going to be trouble. If you're a man, turn to your neighbor and tell him, they're not talking about me. <laughs> the one they are talking about didn't come. Yeah, I see women also saying it. <laughs> I don't understand whether you feel that you are. Anyway, I want to finish this. I want to finish this. I want to finish this. And then you go back to Mary. Very simply, somebody's cooking. She gets on the feet of, follow me here, of the master. And when she gets on the feet of the master, the Lord speaks something into her. And Jesus says, this part shall not be taken away from her. This one. The day Lazarus died, Martha was the first to come running. Jesus asked her, where is Mary? <laughs> Imagine, there, there is somebody who seems like they are seeking out, but there is someone who seems like God is seeking them out. Somebody say, that is me. There, there is somebody, they, they seem like God is, they are going on prayer mountains. There are some people God is finding in the room. Are you hearing me? They are going under rain to receive the Holy Ghost. There are some people he's finding in their cars. They're driving back home. And Holy Ghost power gets into their spirit. And they find themselves saying, Rapa, Kota, Laba, Yere, Koya. Why? Because somebody sat at the feet and received the word. We d- Pastor, we don't want to pay the price for hearing. You get a Christian and tell him, just sit down and listen to the gospel for an hour. Wah! Tell him we are going to pray for the sick the whole night. Uh-huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are we together? Not that it's not okay. And God will continue to do more miracles amidst us. But all of those miracles are at one thing. To get the attention of men to hear. No man can have a part in this gospel if he does not have a certain honor for the word. How, how do you begin your day? 
How do you begin your day? You begin it with a devotion or something. Read the word. Fill yourself. Read the word and speak in tongues. When you're going, the first thing, the first thing when you wake up, you check your Bible or devotion. First thing. Before you even brush your teeth. You read it. Speak things out of there. And out of speaking it, you start brushing your teeth. You're speaking in tongues, but you're brushing. The Bible says, He sent a word unto Jacob, and it lit the whole of Israel. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man, that is why I had compass. I remember our days. We still do. Now we are more crazier. You wake up in the morning and look at the Bible and read something. And then it stirs you up. And you feel like you don't look like anybody. One time I read the Bible. Honestly, I looked in the mirror. I saw myself light-skinned. I said, my call on it. God is my witness. Why? Because this word can make you anything. With God, all things are possible. I got into the mirror. I said, is this you, Grace? Yes, it is you. Why? Because the word of God can turn you into anything. It can turn you into anything. That's why we are mad with the word. Why? That's why we preach every Thursday. We don't just pray for you. We teach you. Why? Because we want you to come out of, of the meeting with a path. Don't just be healed in the body. Be healed in your spirit also. Be encouraged in your soul. Be re-energized to your cause. Go out with a purpose. Lose appetite and sleep. Tell God, what did you call me to do? Because the world is looking at us. They are waiting for me and you to show forth the praise of His glory. What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered the hearts of men, it is inside you, professional brother. It's inside you, professional sister. There is something inside you. We have never seen it. You don't wake up like a normal man. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. Me, I don't wake up like a normal man. Sometimes situations will happen in your life. And they're there just to divert you. He knows if he just does something in your life, he can stop you from ministry. You understand? And then he what? He stops you. There's somebody I know. That person called me a few days ago and told me they saw a tumor in their child. You remember the testimony I told you? So, in normal circumstances, a parent with a child who has a tumor of cancer, she's supposed to stay at home and look after her what? Her child. This woman told me, Apostle, I can't stop going to ministry because there's a kid who has cancer. Do you understand what I'm saying? She said, wherever me I'm going, for three, four, five days she was away from her child, six days. Some say, be with your child in her last hours. You're killing them. She said, no. God gave me this child whole. I'm not going to stop ministering because the child is sick. I told her, that's the spirit. We laid hands on the kid. She took the kid to the doctor yesterday. And the doctor said, the tumor now is inactive. We don't understand what happened. Of course. Of course. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Come on. When will the devil know who you are? The day your child falls sick, you tell the devil whether my child is sick or is not. He is the author and the finisher of the faith. Though he slay the child, but yet will I trust him? I'm sorry, I couldn't pray. I had a headache. What? What? Necessity is laid on you. And then you say, you have a headache. Necessity, wait a minute. Necessity is laid on you. And then you tell me you have a headache. You, you're not going to seek the healer because you're sick. Tell your neighbor to be Tell them in Luganda. Even if you don't understand the language, try it. 
Sema mvemo tuvemo mjejo. Hallelujah. Somebody say I have a part and I have a lot in this thing. When you get your part and lot, the anointing will come so strong on you. Why? Because the anointing only goes to men who carry the responsibility of it. It's resident, but it will not function on a man without the responsibility of it. When you say God anoint me, it means get ready to be hated. When you say God anoint me, it means get ready to be persecuted. When you say God anoint me, it means get ready for men to speak evil about you. When you say God anoint me, it means you're going to extend and reduce your sleeping time. When you say God anoint me, it means that you're going to mis- be misunderstood even by sometimes your spouse. What they see is the glory on the pulpit. They don't understand the process. They don't understand the process. When God anoints you, Judas, understand that that part is there on your life. But if you don't understand or misunderstand the mandate, God can replace you. He can replace you. Let me tell you, saints, any man in this room is replaceable. These things of thinking, me, no. He doesn't take the gifts there without calling. That's okay. But God can look for another man. Let me tell you, there are many men who are doing what God had given certain people and they refused it. Why? Because if God wants to save a million people and you refuse, he will raise another man and save them. But we must now have a certain responsibility. Instead of saying, God anoint me, ask him, what is my part and my lot? What is my part and my lot? What is my part and my lot? I saw intercessors interceding, trying to buy. Yeah, bah, bah, bah. But, but the guy is interceding. And then you ask yourself, but why is it that this guy prays a lot, but he doesn't see results? Oh, he's a prayerful guy. Why didn't he see results? No, listen, he's not praying. He's not praying. He's not praying. He's not really praying as you ought. When you pray as you ought, something comes upon your life. Let me tell you something about the anointing. The character of the anointing. Can I show it and then finish? The anointing, I know many of you know he's a person, right? Right? But many people don't understand that the anointing is a submitted spirit when he leads. And that's the irony about it. The Holy Ghost leads men as he's submitted to them. The, the principle of the Spirit of God, the mind of God. You, you see, Jesus could only lead men by serving them. If he couldn't wash Peter's feet, he could not possess him. You understand? That's why he says when any of you who thinks you're your greatest, let that person consider themselves least. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you feel like you're the greatest, the Bible says humble yourself more. God is not anointing us for men to serve us and then us get irresponsible and indifferent to our responsibility to God to serve men. The more God anoints you, the more you're online to serve, not to be served. The man who serves you, serves you because he has a mandate and an assignment to serve you. And that is okay by God. Because that man serves God by serving you. But man of God, you don't take that glory to think that therefore you are called for men to serve you. We don't use our liberty for vice. We use our liberty to serve men. It means you lay down your life for the gospel. Do you understand what I'm saying? Day in, day out, he says that we might not bring offense on the gospel. That we might not bring a misunderstanding on the gospel. We, we don't want the gospel to be misunderstood in, 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 in knowledge, in, in, in persecutions, in strivings, all of these things. He says all of that we do, that the gospel be not blamed. We don't want the gospel to get, yes, thank you, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Next verse. He says, but in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of God. And that's the transition of a servant to a minister. Because many people think because you're serving, you're a minister. 
There is something on a minister that a servant can't have. We are all serving God, but we are not all ministers of God. This is ministry. He says, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. You understand what I'm saying? In that's the thing that tests the true character of what you're believing God for. Are you going to stop to pray because he chucked you? Come on! The kingdom of God is deeper than his chuck. Let him chuck you. Jesus knew you before he came. So say, ah, I'm not going to the church. Be, oh, why? I stopped going to that church. Why? Rachel, Sister Carol annoyed me. Listen, if God's destiny has said that you belong to a ministry... And you're going to cut your destiny because Carol annoyed you. That's offense. One serving can do that, but not a minister. They will abuse you and you'll come back. They will annoy you and you'll forgive them. They will insult you and then you take it in. Are you hearing me? And keep quiet. And they'll put you on a rudder to explain yourself. And then you feel like you want to explain yourself. And then you sense that that's a tweet from the devil. Because explaining yourself means you expose them. And then you swallow it. You go to bed. Now they say you a thief. And then you say, my God will vindicate me for my righteousness. Shall speak for me. Are you hearing me? Then you go to bed. And you're misunderstood. Why? Because there's a price to it. The only thing is the grace is available. Some of you even have conditions under which you pray. That's why you'll never stop coming out. Problems will never stop leaving you. Why? Because the devil knows how to program you. Since there are that one, eh? you don't want her to pray. Just give her a headache at 6 p.m. Because the Bible says they're taken captive by the devil at his own will. His own will. Now I think let me afflict you. And then he afflicts them. You find a woman fighting in her marriage for 20 years. The man has refused to get okay. Why? Very simple. Because the devil realized if this chap is out of order, she can't serve. Are you hearing me? Until the day you wake up and say whether he's funny or not, I'm going to serve God. Whether he comes back drunk and high, I'll put him to bed and then go pray. That is the victory that overcometh the world. Whether I have transport, I'm going to pray. Whether I don't have transport, I'm going to pray. There is a guy who attends Fanero here. He travels 400 kilometers every day. That was a test. Some of you, you come here from here. Now go to here. Then you just slope. You even went over in your kaka. It just slopes to Uma. You only spend fuel when you're going back home. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that guy comes every day earlier than anybody here. Because he's on, he's on the T-Sector team. He travels 200 kilometers, comes, arranges chairs, you sit. When you go back home, he stacks the chairs again. And then travels another 200 kilometers back home every Thursday. And to tell you he does, he's not buying. He has never told me. We just discovered it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether you're in distress, you're a minister of God. Whether you're in affliction, you're a minister of God. You don't wake up and say, ah, I'm not going to preach because I have a stomachache. What do you mean? God is bigger than a stomachache. What is your pattern, Lot? Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, in imprisonment, stripes, long suffering, kindness, by the Holy Ghost. In love and faint, yeah, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And he says, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, yet true, uh -huh, as unknown, yet well known, as dying and behold will live, as chastened and not killed. He says, as sorrowful, yet all were rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing all. That's a minister. That's a minister. I'm trying to put some skin on you. To get to a level where with or without, in or without, in season or not, your pattern lot is there. The anointing will come strong on you. 
Listen, no man just gets there by chance. But the grace is available for every man. Every man. Every man. That day somebody told me, ah, I wanted, I wanted uh, Mr. Sekaran to tell me his success story. He's a successful businessman. I want to know uh, how he worked with his money to become successful. <laughs> I told the chap, no, the man came like a missionary in Uganda. He didn't come predominantly as a businessman. That blessing came later when the assignment changed. So I told the person, can we send you to Kabul now for ministry? <laughs> then you do business there. <laughs> or Kismai or Somalia. Do you understand what I'm saying? They see this. They don't see. Did you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, you're in preparation process. You don't have transport, not because you have a demon of poverty. Why? Why? It's, the devil is not even in it. He's not in it. You have overcome. Are you hearing me? But your heart, your heart is being checked. Your heart is being checked. Anasaba. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Anasaba. Now, as a nation, we have a mandate. Tell your neighbor we have a mandate. If you're here and you're not a Ugandan, by that reason, you've also taken it. As a nation, we have a what? A mandate. There is a move coming in our land. But something has to change. We cannot always go to God to buy. Saints, we cannot always go to God to buy. We cannot always go to God to buy. We cannot always give Him what we have because we want what He has. No. When Jesus was speaking about God, He says, A, a body thou hast prepared. You didn't ask for a sacrifice. No. You asked for a body. Hebrews 10, verse 5. Hebrews 10 verse 5. He says, for, verse 5. He says, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. He says, but a body thou hast prepared me. Next verse. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. But the next verse says, then said I, Lord, lo, I come in the volume of the book. In the volume of the book as it is written of me, to do thy will. When, when the, God didn't want the sacrifice. He wanted to make himself a body that was ready to do his will. That's all he needed. Do you understand? Can you at least make yourself available to God to use you? At least tell him, God, I'm busy. But you know you can use me anyway. I might not stand on the pulpit, but I beseech thee by God. Our, the gospel that is hitting our nation came with men who paid price. If you've read about the people like the Nagenders, they quit their professional jobs to serve God. Not everyone has to quit, but there was a price to it. There was a price to it. But we have to embrace the grace of God that is available for all of us too. As can see in the story of John and in the story of Mary, the one distinctive fact was whether she's at the feet or he's washing the feet of the other, it's what God wants to do in your life, not what he, you want to do for him. The availability for you to tell him, God, deal, you do what you want in my life. So that when you're doing, it is not you, but God doing in you. Every, you must win a soul. You must go back to yourself and say, who, who have I talked about Jesus? Who have I told about Jesus? How many souls have I won this week? How many souls have I won last month, God? I know that I'm growing older every other day, but what am I doing? I want to go to my grave when everybody's saying, he preached, he you understand? Don't, don't just die a good mother. Don't just die a good mother. Are you hearing me? Die with results. Carry sheets to God. Tell him, God, I want these. I want these. Why? Because only for a while has consequences of the life after. We cannot always come to God and ask for candy. We can ask for it, but for a certain point, God heals you to heal others. God opened your eyes to read the Bible, to preach. Just didn't open them for you to see a beautiful girl. 
You could marry her even when you're blind. Do you understand? Do you get where I'm coming from? But the pattern lot. Somebody said the pattern lot. The anointing, the character, the anointing is a person. Are you hearing me? And he leads as he submits to a man. Another thing many people don't understand. That's why the Bible says that the spirit of a prophet, the spirit of the prophet, is subject to the prophet. He is the spirit, but he's subject to. Yet he leadeth who he subjects himself to. Now there's a very beautiful analogy in that, and I've seen this, that there's something beautiful about being led by somebody who is serving you. <laughs> That's why he says, who of you, when you let your animal loose, does not take him to what? To the water. Do you understand what I'm saying? He only delivers us to take us to the water. For us to have as much as we want. That is why the distinction of faith right there is in the middle. When the Bible calls the faith the substance of things hoped for. I need to make a certain point here. The substance of things hoped for. When you are submitted to who is submitted to you. And you're led by one who serves you. You realize that the entity of faith is simply the freedom. What of doing what whatever occasion serves you because he leads you there the true leading of the Holy Spirit is not to a place physical it's to a place spiritual when he tells Abraham I'll take you to a place a land where I where shall inherit he took him to Canaan the Hebrew word for Canaan is low land how could God take a man to Canaan which is a low land and tell him this is where your inheritance is and when we reach Canaan he tells him he's with Lot you remember they separate with Lot. Tells Lot, take the fertile plains of, Ma- of where? Mamre or something. And the Bible says, and the Lord stays with the man in Canaan. And in Canaan, he tells him, look from whence thou art. From the north to the east to the south to the west. For as far as your eye can see, your eye, he says that I have given you. And he says, walk therein. And Abraham refused to walk in Canaan. He walked the whole world. In the spirit, he walked through the whole world, and in just two, three chapters later, he tells him, From now on, you're not Abraham, but Abraham, meaning that you're the father of all nations. Because when I prompted you to walk, I led you to the freedom to choose how far you want to walk. And when you stood there, you walked in the whole world. Now, from today henceforth, anything that comes out of you shall inherit the earth. He says, I'll multiply you to increase, I will increase you. Anything that believes and is a success is a star in this story is my covenant and is of you, is of your bosom. From that day on, the Bible says we are all children of Abraham. So we realize he didn't take him to Canaan to build a house there. He took him to Canaan to see. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit. He didn't take you to Canaan to build. He takes you to Canaan to see. Every leading of the man of the Spirit that serves you only leads you to one thing the liberty and freedom to access without limit but that access comes with a responsibility because when you know you can have everything your prayer changes because now everything I have comes with a responsibility to whom much is given much is required now that's why healing is going to increase in our lives because when we are healing We are not just believing God, no. We are persuaded of the one which leads us that he is subject as a spirit to us to heal. That's why you'll see healing will increase more. Your finances will be fixed. Many people will start to get more and more results. Why? As you continue to understand this principle, you realize that the entity faith is simply the middle ground. Yes, he's moving now. He's simply the middle ground. To reconcile what he has established to lead you into and what he's ready to submit 
under you for you to decide how you want or what you want. The, that's the liberty of the spirit. I'm leading you somewhere, says the Holy Ghost. But I'm not limiting you because as I lead you, I submit myself to you to determine how you want me to operate where I take you. I simply lead you to see. For the revealed things belong unto God. Sorry, the hidden things. But the revealed things, the Bible says, belong unto us. Now we are moving in a time where God is starting to visit men in their bedrooms, in their sitting rooms, in their wherever they will be. But this is one thing he's looking for. He wants to lead you where he can submit to you. Because by the time you're in that place, you can't error. He tells him that when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall turn into another man. And he tells him, and thou shalt prophesy. And he said, and whatsoever occasion serves you, he says do. For God is with you. When he's with you, you can't error. He doesn't, he doesn't worry that you're going to function out of his will. Because where he led you, he's too submitted to you. We understand. He carries the faith in you enough to know that when you're in that place, you won't error. Because error is dealt with before that. Way before that. And when the anointing settles on that man, it carries a responsibility. Somebody say, Amen. Start speaking in other tongues. Just a minute only. Just a minute only. 60 seconds. Don't worry. Whatever the Lord wants to do in 60 seconds is going to do. Are you ready? Are you ready? Holy Ghost, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, start to move. Start to touch. Start to change. Start to establish. Start to instruct. Start to align. Pakarabasoba. Just take 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, God can change everything in your life. In 60 seconds. In 60 seconds. Tell God, use me in whichever way. I don't know how or what you're going to do. I might not be a preacher. I might not be a worshiper. Maybe I am a preacher. But I've not understood my part. I've not understood my lot. To me. and lots that we've not apprehended to fullness. God, let us apprehend them. Our ministers, they are ministers of the gospel. God, we are ready for you to deal with us too. Just do what you have to do. It's my life for purpose and cause. Father, I thank you. Because tonight something falls on a certain man. On a certain woman. And it's going to change their lives. It's going to change their lives. You change men in such moments. God, we want to serve you. 
in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen if you have never given your life to Christ and you want to accept him come here today now come here just come and give your life to Christ come we want to close come 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 ask your neighbor are you born again if they are not tell them go please go anybody else can I give it only 30 seconds hurry if you're gonna be born again younger than one man yes somebody clap for Jesus the sick are healed for those of you who are moving please move in groups groups of twos or threes there's a cadangerous place at the entrance there move in groups of twos or threes but I think they put security there also so it's alright anybody else I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that I'm born again. Say, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.